and welcome to Fresh Perspectives. My name is Gail, and my guest today is a young man who was a senior in college. Uh, his name is Kevin Siebold. Uh, thank you for coming on, Kevin. Um, now you go to college at Fredonia and you're going to graduate this spring, is that correct? Right, right. Thank you for having me for starters. But yep, senior business administration, finance major, graduating mid-May. And um, part of the reason he's on is he is going to be uh, an intern at the Greystone Nature Preserve this spring and summer. So congratulations on lining that up for yourself. Now, how did you happen to pick the particular subjects that you have gone to college for? In terms of my major? Yeah, right. Right. Okay. So, yeah, I'm a business administration finance major with minors in economics and psychology. Oh, really? Psychology. Right. That's really interesting, isn't it? Right. I thought psychology would be a good pick for really any major, right? Anything with where you're working with people, customer relations, right. any customer facing position, people are a huge aspect. And working in finance, money, you know, mm -hmm. touchy topic for a lot of people, oh, so yeah. the people side oh, of things yeah. might help out <laughs> with that. Um, but when I was younger, I, my goal going into it was to be a wealth manager. A right? wealth manager. Wealth management, you know, help, I wanted to help people um, plan for retirement, homes, fa uh, families, children, uh, retirement so they can like live the lives they want to leave because um, on top of it being a touchy subject financial literacy just isn't something that's taught very much nowadays at all in terms of like education school high school college so a lot of people don't have that background don't have that experience and I wanted to be able to help them get to their point in their lives that they want to be at even though they were never taught how to get there mm -hmm. yeah I found out that there are attorneys who specialize in asset protection Mm -hmm. planning and so forth. I'll bet you could get a job working at somebody's law office. <laughs> Maybe. I've never thought about it, but it <laughs> yeah, sounds exciting. Yeah. In fact, uh, there is an attorney that comes on Fresh Perspectives once in a while oh. who is, specializes in uh, those sorts of things. So, oh, that's um, exciting. Yeah, yeah. Um, his, the interviews are really interesting when he comes on because he gives a lot of really good advice. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you had kind of an interesting story about why you have been going to school in Fredonia, and it has to do with the pandemic. You want to tell the viewing audience about that? Yeah. Um, so, I was going to SUNY Oswego when I first started college, but when the pandemic hit. I didn't want to be paying all of that room and board to be locked in my dorm essentially, right? Like part of wanting to live on campus is to get the college experience that hasn't been there for a couple of years, right? With the pan pandemic and um, limits on how many people you can have in a meeting and whatnot. So I transferred back to Fredonia, which is where I grew up. My family lives here, so I was able to live at home, drop the costs, and still um, have some sort of freedom without being locked in my dorm all the time. Oh yeah, that was a good idea that uh, that switch was. So um, now, uh, how did you wind up getting lined up with the Greystone Nature Preserve uh, for being an intern this year? Right, so you know, being a finance major, Nature Preserve probably isn't what you would expect me to right, do for right. an internship. But yeah, well, a lot of their interns <laughs> <laughs> haven't really, you know, been into that for their education, mm -hmm. but uh, apparently some of some of the interns they've had there have actually gone into an entirely different line of work than oh. they were originally planning uh, to do, uh, just because they fell in love so much with the work they were doing out there. Mm -hmm. uh, something about somebody, uh, somebody is working. Uh, as a forestry person now the went to college for something else so but I hope you kind of stick with that financial thing because I think you can probably help a lot of people right. right so anyways now back to the story about how you wound up getting lined up with them mm -hmm. so 
graduating this semester, I needed an internship just for my graduation requirement. So I was going through all the motions, right, looking online, um, looking at as many leads as I could to find what opportunities were out there. I found them, I want to say, on Handshake, which is a college kind of networking website. Oh, okay. And uh, it just seemed like it would be a good, well-rounded internship to develop a lot of soft skills mm -hmm. right, that I would need for business. Um, uh, networking, communicating, writing, project management, all of those sort of skills rather than a specific financial internship where I'd get experience in the numbers, but it might like lock me into a specific avenue up when I leave college, whereas this is going to provide a lot of well-rounded experience mm -hmm. for whatever position I go into, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what helped me decide on it, along with the fact that the goals of the internship align intrinsically with my personal values. Right? I love being in nature, hiking, spending time outdoors, and this being them being an educational um, establishment for environmental efforts. I thought it would, you know, it, there's some sort of connection there with, right, with what I enjoy doing in my free time and them trying to preserve nature and, and educate about nature and stuff like that avenue. So there was, there was both sides of it. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, you get to spend a lot of time outside um, when you work over at Greystone. Um, but also, it sounds like your education will be very helpful towards towards them with the kind of uh, things because there's a certain amount of that involved in running a place like Greystone too. Right. So your financial training probably will be very helpful to them. Right. Yeah. So now, shall we move along to um, the pictures? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that works. Okay. So the Crown of Chautauqua County project is why I've been brought on to this. Um, that's a little slogan there, embracing possibilities naturally, right? Um, the whole point of the project is to try and get as much land conserved within the Crown of Chautauqua County, which I'll go into shortly, as, as possible, right? In the area of Chautauqua County being a unique geographical area, which I have slides later about it, but for the Crown of Chautauqua County, it's all about, uh, we're on a continental border. Continental you know, divide. 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 Yeah, That's the yeah. word, continental divide, right? Uh, there's a big escarpment that divides the St. Lawrence and Mississippi rivers and spreads through know, all the watershed, right? Gets divided, there's glacial remnants, there's ancient hemlock groves. Um, so it's all very unique environmental factors that you don't see in a lot of places that aren't on continental divides. And a lot of people don't know about that here. So, and there's been, a, there have been a couple efforts, um, or a couple of problems where people are going to log those types of areas oh, for oh, yeah, financial yeah. use or gain and whatnot. So the goal is to get as much land as conserved as possible, even though it's a tricky business, right? This internship will go, this work that I'm doing now will go on way beyond me after I'm done and graduated, right? Somebody will pick up where I left off to keep mm -hmm. trying to get stuff conserved. Mm -hmm. But at the very least, we're trying to educate people about all of this, right? Not mm -hmm. a lot of people know about it. People, I've lived here my whole life. I didn't hear about it or any of these sort of geographical features until I started this internship. So um, that, that's why I'm here, right? To get, educate people, to inform as many people as possible, and then hopefully get some of that land conserved mm -hmm. through our work. Yeah, do you know anything about uh, why trees are so important to the environment? I mean, there's, there's a number of reasons, right? Just these specific areas locally, they create microclimates and, you know, trees mm -hmm. being a part of that environment have to do with, like, air purification, uh, habitats for the creatures um, and everything like that. So these microclimates protect these unique species, um, provide unique areas that species migrate to and everything like that. So they're really just like a foundation, right? Mm -hmm. they, I mean, they create the environment. It's like, right, if you took away our houses, where would our, what would we do, right? Mm -hmm. That's our shelter, that's where we like, that's our safety and everything mm -hmm. like that. It protects us from the environments. It offers us plenty of utility, right? So if you take away their trees, you know, all these animals that use them for this or that reason, you know, what are they gonna do, like birds? You're like, you know, where are they gonna build nests and whatnot? So mm -hmm. there's just, 
a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. Well, also, uh, they provide uh, the oxygen we need for the planet, right. too. Uh, they, they make it for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, so cutting down too many trees is not, not good for any reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, not just for the animals, but for the animals too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now there's a lot of invasive species. I know that Bill and Diane uh, usually um, work at um, eliminating invasive species from the Greystone mm -hmm. property. You've probably spoken with them about that. A little bit, yeah. I've learned that land conservation is a lot trickier of a subject than you might think, right? The days of getting land and setting it aside are over. So everything requires upkeep between keeping invasive species out or eliminating them. So there's a lot of land in this area that honestly conservancies might not want because mm -hmm. of invasive species, mm -hmm. which is why it's important to get the the fresh land now before anything like that happens to it, before it gets logged or anything like that. So yeah, they're, they're a problem, but um, right, like these, these areas, to, just to get them conserved require upkeep costs. So that's another thing, right? You need to raise funds to purchase the land and then the conservancies have to want them. Is, are the upkeep costs worth it? So that's why we're trying to get the legwork in now before it gets any harder in the future, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, there's probably a lot to it. Uh, shall we go on to the next uh, part of the PowerPoint? Yeah, okay, so just a little about Greystone Nature Preserve. Um, there's a little quote there by Wendell Berry. He has a lot of environmental literature that's very interesting. Uh, this was a quote mm -hmm. that I just personally liked. It's, uh, I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with for forethought of grief. So just kind of spending time in nature it's just peaceful, right? It like is. you're just in that moment. There's no worries about the future, the past. You can just embrace it, um, and I think that's really important. You know, I, I talk about psychological effects of spending time oh, in nature yeah. later on. Oh yeah, yeah. But for Greystone, right? Like I said, uh, if we can't get land conserved, at the very least, we want to educate people. So they're an experiential environmental teaching facility. They have a number of acres themselves, 75 um, outside of Fredonia near Bear Lake. Right, they have offer, they have trails, fields, they have overlook spots. They often do, I want to say, programs where they can bring people in and educate right, them about right, the land, what they right. have on their land. I remember um, two or, well, it was before the pandemic. I remember we went out there, I think it was on a day in April, and we went out and planted trees, mm -hmm. I remember. Um, and uh, uh, things like that. Well, actually, our Vegetarian Vegan Society uh, has had, uh, occasionally had one of our dinners out there when it's in the summer because we usually like to have an annual herb walk. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's always a lot of fun to go out there for that. Right. I want to say that, yeah, they offer their land for events like that, weddings, right, um, right. gatherings, which is, a great idea personally because like people might not people might just want to spend that time in nature get an outdoor environment but then when they get there they might learn a thing or two mm -hmm. about right Chautauqua County what it has to offer the geographical features and you know they might leave with a better understanding and appreciation of the land that they just you know they just want to spend time in right on right. the surface level but there's a lot more to it than that right. that I don't think people realize okay yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on out there. Uh, the first time I ever went there, they had something they called uh, the Aqua, an Aqua uh, program where they had various speakers talking about the importance of um, keeping the water from being polluted and so forth. Mm -hmm. I don't think... I didn't hear about that one. I know oh, they have, that was a long time ago. I yeah, know, they've had was, a number of them uh, over the years. But, yeah, it's um, like, it's interesting. Yeah, it might have been a whole decade ago that okay, they had right. that. Yeah, right. yeah, it was pretty interesting. Now, there's, there's anything you want to do with land conservancy. Like, we were talking about the trees and oxygen, there's the lakes and like, there's algae and all of that, and the waters, which also promotes oxygen. Um, mm -hmm. There's... There's almost too much to go over, but you know we're doing what we can to get people involved. Right. right? Oh, oh, for the geographic ge features. Right. So, this 
uh, image specifically is a local image. I've been kind of, some of them in the PowerPoint are, aren't local, just to try and get the aspect of nature in general, but this one is local. I want to say it, it is Greystone Nature Preserve, but this, the geographic features are things I was going over earlier. It's along the Eastern Continental Divide. Uh, there's a diverse ecosystem. Which, you know, we have numer numerous lakes right on Lake Erie. There's Bear Lake, uh, Finley Lake, I want to say, around 50 mi miles of shoreline. So, right, there's forestry, there's lakes, there's good, good hillscapes, but then there's a shore. So you're getting a lot of unique environments in a, in a short distance. Divides the St. Lawrence and Mississippi rivers like I went over. Uh, being in, a, in the watershed, it's glacial remnants. Uh, microclimates offer, host, offer a home to a host of diverse species. So I, I think I might have gone over it later in the PowerPoint too, but there's plenty of unique species that come. They migrate all the way down from the Amazon rainforest and all the way up from the Arctic down to these wow. little, wow. down to these little microclimates, because just within these uh, unique little atmospheres in the environment, it kind of shields those areas from like the outside world, or like climate change nowadays, the warming and whatnot. And it just provides this like little safe havens, these safe spots as birds migrate up and down mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the planet. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I noticed on that, uh, what was written on that, with that last picture, it said something about glacial remnants. Right. Glacial remnants running southwest to northeast. Would you explain what that is? So that would just be like, uh, to my understanding, the pathways that glaciers took Oh. way long ago, which has developed the, the way the land mass has with valleys oh, okay. and uh, uh, gorges and whatnot in Chautauqua County is how that goes. And like the escarpment, the continental, the continental divide is kind of like, like a hill that separates the waterways, but the glacial remnants would be the opposite, right? They'd be kind of dips and, oh, and valleys okay. in the earth yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, so, so you're getting a lot of different, which hills and valleys have plenty to do with the atmosphere and clouds and all of that. So it all comes together really well in this little area of Chautauqua County that not a lot of people recognize. Okay, let's see what the next one is. Psychological benefits. Right, so ecotherapy being kind of a form of uh, psychology has been shown to reduce symptoms of mild to moderate depression. Um, there's a thing called seasonal affective disorder which is just kind of People get sad in the winter because there's not, not as much daylight. They don't spend as much time outside. It's good for us, right? We're meant to be out in nature regularly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So spending time in nature can prevent those types of diseases, reduce symptoms, keep the body happy and healthy, right? You're getting, you're getting vitamins just from like the sun, right? Your skin, you're absorbing the energy. Um, and then exposure to nature, there's a lot more beyond just depression, right? Uh, improved attention span just from spending time out in nature. Uh, increased immune system response, I want to say lower nervous system arousal, right? So like we were saying earlier, when you're in nature, you're in the present, you're relaxed in that moment, you, there's no worries, there's no cares. Yeah, uh, you know, when you are like out in the woods, it's like all, everything else clears out of your mind, doesn't right. it? Right, so it's almost as if your body's getting like a full rest. You're not a full rest, you're not sleeping, but more rest than usual, mm -hmm. right? Your brain can kind of relax, uh, your central nervous system can relax, so it increases your immune response, attention, uh, the way you, you, the activity of your brain, you know, your higher functioning. Um, and there's just a lot of benefits that people might not realize, right? People go outside and feel relaxed, but they might not know what's actually happening to them, mm -hmm. like how their body's responding to it. Mm -hmm. So they just know that they like being out they there. They just know that they like it. Yeah. I mean, which is good. That's good enough. That's great if it gets <laughs> them out there. But yeah. hopefully if people actually see the benefits, they might spend more time outside. Like I want to say one study showed there was like a certain number of hours where you could start seeing the benefits like that. Like, and it wasn't that much, right? You don't have to spend all day outside, right? I understand people have work, people have jobs, mm -hmm. but even just like a handful of hours over the week, maybe an hour a day or something like that. Go mm. for a walk, you know, take the animals, the kids outside, anything mm. like that. It's just enough to get that sort of, uh, that feeling in you, mm -hmm. all of that. 
Well, the neighborhood that I live in, uh, I, we are really lucky to live there. Uh, to me, it's one of the most beautiful neighborhoods in the whole world, probably, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, we live across, there's a pond on the other side of the road from our house, and so we get to listen to the spring peepers. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people who live in a city, they miss out on that. It's, oh, yeah. it's, to me, that's just the most beautiful sound in the whole world is the sound of the spring peepers after a winter of fair, fairly si uh, silent mm -hmm. uh, uh, silence. So, um, but uh, I just love that. Great. So you, you've spent, Diana was saying, you spend a lot of time outside, right, and, you know, nature. So do you have any personal experiences with, like, those psychological benefits? Like, do you notice anything when you spend more time in nature coming um, out of it? Yeah, it, um, it's kind of almost like uh, feeling like you're in heaven or something right. when, you're, when you're out walking in the woods and like that. It's, it's, it's just absolutely, it's just absolutely wonderful. It just, it just feels good. And as you're walking around on bare ground instead of pavement, mm -hmm. you find, um, you find that the walking on the bare ground makes you feel uh, more calm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's different than walking, you know, on a sidewalk or anything like that. Right, right. I mean, our society has advanced so much faster than our bodies can adapt, right? So we're still used to spending that time outside in nature on that bare ground. We're not used to sitting in uh, chairs, nine to five desk jobs inside with artificial lighting all day. So getting out into nature can uh, still has those benefits because it's what our bodies are used to, right? Being oh, in these yeah. sorts of environments all day at work in artificial lighting, it's almost a stressor on the body because we, we still haven't adapted to it. It's not a natural setting for us. Yeah, it, I've noticed that um, if, you, when you're, if you are working indoors doing, um, you would think it would be more restful if you're just sitting and maybe doing paperwork or, or something. But, and then, but nowadays there's all the computers that people have to use all mm -hmm. the time and everything. And, I, honestly, uh, that will make you feel tired rather quickly. Mm -hmm. But when you're hiking in the woods, you don't get tired. Yeah. It, it actually seems to energize you. Mm -hmm. the, the clean, fresh air, mm -hmm. being outside, being in the sun, absolutely. And a lot of the chairs created nowadays, like sitting down all day isn't good for you really mm -hmm. either, no, right? it's, it's not, not good no, it's not. for the natural curvature of your spine, right. the way most of Or even, st even a job where you stand in this one place all day without, what, when you, a standing job, you know, right. is really tiring too if you're just uh, in one place all day doing the same repetitive thing over and over. Right, no, I agree. Okay. Let's see, what other benefits? Okay, um. spending time in natural light can reduce symptoms of seasonal affective disorder. Right. Exposure to nature has been linked to improved attention span, lower stress levels, enhanced immune system function, lower nervous system arousal, better mood, along with an increase in self-esteem. Mm -hmm. um, now, enhanced immune system. Um, I really like uh, that. That would have to do with like preventing uh, your mm -hmm. immune system fights off infections and things better if you spend time out in nature. Right, so spending time in nature, right? kind of relaxes the body in a sense. It's mm -hmm. taking, it can, like the central nervous system, it said it, less arousal. Mm -hmm. So it can rest, which means the immune system can better function, right? If you're not running at a higher percentage of what your body is doing, like all the time, mm -hmm. right? I don't know, I've experienced additionally beyond finance and everything in like the, the health industry, the fitness industry. Mm -hmm. And I guess when you're lifting weights, like max effort, for too many days in a row, it taxes your nervous system. Mm -hmm. And if you tax that too much, it can't perform as well, and it'll reduce your immune system response, 
which can get you sick more readily and everything like that because your body just doesn't have the energy to run at that level all the time. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be putting out that max effort mm -hmm. and spending time in nature kind of relaxes you. So it's giving more time to relax and more time to recuperate for when you have to fight off those diseases and germs and all of that mm -hmm. fun stuff. And we really need that kind of help right now, don't right, we? After 100%. what we've been going through the last couple of years. Absolutely. So, um, well, let's see what the next picture is. Environmental benefits. Now that means uh, the benefits for the environment itself, is that correct? Right, right. More like uh, concrete, um, scientific, environmental things than like our own mood and whatnot, which is the last one. So I've kind of touched on a couple of these, but natural ecosystems and prevents possible extinction of species, right? So this is like about preser preserving the land, right? Cut down enough trees in a certain area, it can upset the natural balance of things the natural uh, life cycle of animals, uh, the food chain. Um, right? If you take away enough all the habitats of certain birds in the area or certain, you know, get rid of a swamp and there's no more, ro more room for like frogs or anything like that, that's going to upset a lot of things, right? Uh, right extinction's a big right. thing nowadays. Well, you know, um, there's this certain, uh, it, you're, you just reminded me there's a certain province in China, maybe you've heard of this, um, I think it was when Chairman Mao was in power over there, uh, there were these birds that he didn't like. And he ordered them to all be shot. So they went out and uh, killed all of these birds. But then that created an overabundance of the kinds of insects that these birds had been eating. Mm -hmm. So then they used pesticides on the insects. Well, that n not only killed off um, the kinds of insects that were detrimental to the fruit trees and things, but it also killed off the honeybees, the pollinating insects. So now in this province in China, they have to hand, the farmers have to hand pollinate their fruit trees. That's got to be an awful lot of extra work. Right, no, it's a shame. I mean, nature's worked all these years just fine without us. You know, <laughs> it has a very delicate um, balance <laughs> in it. So uh, disrupting it as little as possible, I think should be a factor that, more of a factor than people take into consideration mm -hmm. nowadays with certain policies or for profit whatever they're trying to do, right? Logging to build a condo or whatever. Like mm -hmm. they, they, they're not thinking of like long-term ram mm -hmm. ramifications. Well, you know, another thing that I've noticed too, um, if you, sometimes when you tell this to like, maybe somebody who's in their 80s or something like that, you know, and I've had uh, people say, well, I'm not gonna live that much longer anyway, so, um, you know, so it's it's not going to hurt me. And some of these people that are saying this have like children and grandchildren and great grandchildren, right. and it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> you need to be thinking ahead. Right. You know what this world is going to be like when they grow up and the even the uh, generations that aren't even here yet. Right. So it's yeah, people just lose sight of the big picture a lot of the time. They're like, when can I, how can I make the most money? How, what can I do for myself? But it's like, well, what about your kids? Like, they're gonna have to grow up in this world. So, right, like I bet, like in China you were saying, he probably wasn't thinking like, oh, like I might have less food output over time because my farmers have to do all this extra work. Like that's gonna have severe economic consequences in addition mm -hmm. to just like possible mm -hmm. food shortages, mm -hmm. extinction, this, that, and the other. Well, I think he was one of those dictators that didn't really. He probably didn't care. Didn't care. didn't care, you know, he just wanted things the way he wanted them right, right then and there, right. so. But, you know, what do you, it's just something I think we should think about more often. Right, well, I guess we can go back to that picture now. Um, right, um, uh, the next one. The oh, environmental the oh, oh, yeah, we went backwards, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. 
So keeping the land in its natural state can prevent potential pollution problems from industry further protecting its surrounding. Right, so we're talking about long-term benefits or long-term hazards mm -hmm. of tearing it down or changing things. Mm -hmm. There's long-term benefits with mm -hmm. not, right? Right, um, right. Because we're keeping it as is, we're also dodging all of those long-term hazards, right? We're going to be protecting from pollution even more. We're going to mm -hmm. be having more fresh oxygen in the area, right, for long-term growth of the planet, healthy nature. Um, so it's just simple things like that add up, mm -hmm. right? We're not only um, keeping the land and dodging some new building or just some profits, we're protecting all the land around that area from the, whatever pollution might have come from that project, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, there's, there's plenty of environmental benefits to conserving as much land as we possibly can. But, and uh, so the natural functioning of the ecosystem around us purifies the air and waterways, mm -hmm. like you were saying, the oxygen. Um, for us, other animals, birds, and whatnot, along with the waterways for fish, right? This is a huge, like I was saying, the escarpment, the kind of hill-type structure is on the Continental Divide. The Mississippi and St. Lawrence rivers, those are huge, right? Right. If, if, you know, we start polluting up here or mess up the ecosystem down here with logging or change the environment, invasive species, that's going to have Right. Well, downstream. that's what John Jablonski said uh, earlier in the winter when I interviewed him from the Watershed Conservancy. Uh, he was talking about how the pollution, any pollution from up here uh, goes down those waterways and it accumulates more toxins on its way down, you know, so, uh, so, so it just gets worse and worse mm -hmm. as it uh, goes all the way south. And he said something about um, there's a lot more people have cancer the farther south you get along the uh, Mississippi River. Oh, wow. Um, you know, that he seemed to think you know, had a lot to do with, with all of those toxins. So um, it's a really good thing. But another thing uh, we've done, we did a program on this, I think it was back in the fall, about mushrooms. We did, um, we did a program that we called uh, How Mushrooms Can Save the World. And, you know, it, it's like I, I've been finding out that um, the mycelia, which is the part of the mushroom uh, that the part we eat grows out of, apparently that mycelia can soak up oil spills and like oh. that. Yeah. Hmm. And uh, it can also, if you plant, uh, plant it on banks, you know, going down, down hill towards rivers and three, streams and things, it can... Um, it can filter wa uh, like rainwater and stuff that's going down the banks oh. and so that all of the sediment and toxins don't go down into the water. So uh, there's just so many interesting things, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that uh, can help. No, yeah, I, I hadn't heard of that before. That's really interesting. Yeah, you'll have to look into that. Right. It's a really interesting subject. We were able to do an entire hour-long episode on it. Right. So it's, it's, look into it. I think you'll enjoy it. Mm -hmm. The more biologically diverse an environment is, the healthier it is, and the greater its benefits become, right? So mm -hmm. that kind of goes back to extinction. You know, you take one right. piece of the puzzle out, it all starts to crumble, it'll all start to fall. Yeah. So you want to keep it as diverse as possible, keep it as open to as many species as, you, as naturally are occurring in that area, right? There's problems with invasive species, which, you know, at this point, we can do our best to try and fight them back or try and eliminate them or keep the land conserved free of them. But, you know, some of them are really hard to deal with. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it's just in our best interest to try and keep the land that we do want to conserve or have conserved as biologically diverse as possible to keep so that we'll at least be getting all of these different benefits from certain areas, even if not all, right? You know, mm -hmm. we do need houses and land, right? Like we have towns and there are cities, but trying to keep as much preserved as possible right. is, a key, right. is a key factor. 
Oh, the College Lodge. Right. So the College Lodge was a specific scenario in which they were going to log it. Uh, maintenance costs, I guess, were very high for the, uh, what's it called, the faculty, Fredonia Student Association mm -hmm. were planning on logging it for economic benefits just because, like, like I said, land, there's a lot of upkeep. Mm -hmm. um, so they just didn't have the money, they didn't long term, they were going to log it, get their environmental economic benefits. But some grassroots efforts came together with the watershed, the Western New York Land Conservancy to put a lot of that land in conservation. I want to say they got most of it, almost all of it conserved, and except for like 30 some acres around the college lodge tight, but the, co the college is going to keep that as is. They're not going to log the 30 acres and whatnot. So, you know, this is a big win. Um, right, th this was one of the areas I was saying this grows of ancient hemlocks and beautiful um, marshes. And oh, this was going back to the birds. So I, I, there's a large aerial highway for all of these different sorts of migratory birds, um, some coming all the way from the Amazon rainforest and up from the Arctic tundra. So this incredible diversity, like I was just saying in the previous slide, of species of all types of animals, including mammals, fish, reptiles, amphibians, uh, birds, it just, these areas are the main targets for these sort of conservation efforts because they don't have as many of the invasive species and it's really at the center of like the crown of Chautauqua of like the escarpment, uh, the, the continental divide and all of these beautiful like ancient hemlock groves, right? Like these trees have been here for like plenty, like way longer than we have, right? Oh, they've been yeah. keeping, the, they've been keeping oh, this yeah. earth yeah. up and running. So, you know, it's just, why would we take it down? Just because they don't have the money to upkeep, you know. I would wish it was a world in which their first thought was like, why don't we get it conserved? And that if they knew the benefits and all of this and why they should get it conserved over just taking a quick, easy, cheap pr profit way out of getting right, logged. Right. But, you know, it worked out in this scenario. It worked out for the best. Oh, good. And so that's Well, good. I'm glad to hear that anyways. Right. It's almost amazing uh, to he for me to hear that there are areas where the invasive species haven't come in yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder how that is that that doesn't happen. I'm, I, uh, I'm not too well versed in like the specific invasive species and what stops them from getting into certain areas, but you know maybe it's the microclimates that I was talking about, these mm -hmm. little sort of atmospheres mm -hmm. in the environment that keep these specific climates temperate. Um, maybe that, that sort of area is keeping them at bay or whatnot, or maybe they just, you know, maybe it's just taking them so long of a time to get over there. Or maybe there's, you know, a different, like a valley in between them so that couldn't, they couldn't spread, or, you know, maybe uh, something like that. Just like little things like that, right? You know, certain plants and invasive species need hosts or trees to grow around, so maybe there's just like a break and then they couldn't make it. But, um, you know, I'm not going to question it. You know, I'll take what we can get, you know, as long <laughs> as there's land to conserve, right? right, that's, that's, right. A, that's a win. Right, right. Yeah, it, it really is important to uh, conserve land. Mm -hmm. So, um, was there local beauty? Right. So just oh, a oh, Lundsman Overlook in Brockton. In Brockton. Right. So you get that cool vista over, over yes, the lake. Yes, yes. Um, I, I knew the people that that overlook was named after. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah, I actually, I actually knew those people. Um, yeah, so, you know, just a few of the local efforts, local beauty things of Chautauqua County, the different things we have in this area, right? There's the Overlands Trail. Okay, so that's the bottom picture there is uh, the College Lodge Forest. Now, right. What is the total amount of acres on that piece of property? I want to say it's around like 180. 180? I want to say the college kept 30, give or take, and then 150 went to the Land Conservancy. Oh, I okay. I want to say. So the Land Conservancy would 
be able to protect it. Then. Right, oh, right. Good, so the Land good. Conservancy is protecting what they got. Okay. And the College Lodge is going to keep and maintain their smaller property, which is a lot more manageable for the uh, association. Yeah, that Lundsman Overlook, we have uh, had a few of our uh, vegetarian vegan society dinners out there. We had the annual herb walk in the woods around the okay. the Overlook Park there a few times. And then there was uh, the Overland Pass Trail. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, I've, I've hiked on that. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nice it's out really there. Nice. Yeah. There's like an east and west one, I want to say. Yeah, I, I okay. think it goes from Panama to the Gorge, mm. I, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. I think that's... That sounds right. That sounds yeah. Right. So, bringing it all together. Is this the last uh, picture in the PowerPoint presentation? Or I think it, I think it might be. There's like a thank you at the end. Okay, but, right. yeah, bringing it all together. Right, so like I said, land conservancy is a tricky business, right? You need to find space that the conservancies want without, as, without a, too many invasive species. You need to have uh, field biologists go out there and make sure everything's, you know, going attack. There's no problems. So, but the areas that we're focusing on currently to try and narrow things down, keep things manageable for myself and future interns, is uh, the Bear Lake area, the College Lodge Forest, and and Greystone. Just like that general area. Yeah. Okay. So lands. the College Lodge Forest is close to Greystone and Bear Lake. Then. Right. Yeah. Okay. I want to say so. Um, so th these are the main areas that we've kind of been looking into and uh, speaking with different people about. And, you know, obviously as much land as possible is the goal, getting, as what, getting whatever we can, right? Uh, but, I mean, there are conservancies in the area, like the Chautauqua Watershed Conservancy, which has more than 1,000 acres conserved in Chautauqua County alone, right? So, you know, we're not alone. Like, Greystone has their own acreage. And then there's all these different land conservancies trying to work towards the same goal. So we're trying to make it, you know, maybe help them out in any way we can, if they can help us out in whatever way. And then um, just the education lacks this, right? Mm -hmm. This alone might get people like motivated, be like, oh, well, I didn't know that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Might get more people more involved, mm -hmm. more motivated, right? For the College Lodge, getting that conserved, it was a big fundraising effort and grassroots efforts. So just educating people about it. Maybe they might be more inclined if they see one of those sorts of fundraisers in the future, that, oh, I heard about this, I learned about this, I know what it means. They might be a, a supporter of it at that point. Whereas if they didn't know all of these benefits and didn't know as much about the land, they might just brush it off. Right? Like, wow, ah, what's, you know, what's the big deal? How does it affect me? You know, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I think a lot of people just don't know. And that's why I like to get people like you and people from the Watershed Conservancy and all of those things on Fresh Perspectives is to help to, help to bring um, these things to the attention of people. Mm -hmm. No, 100%. It was, this is a great opportunity. Um, I'm thankful that I had the chance, but, but you know, if we can get land conserved, that's great. But like I said, you know, bringing it all together for this interview, this PowerPoint, but this is going to go beyond me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, mm -hmm. Greystone's going to be working with interns in Thank the future. Thank you. Is that, oh, that's, that's the Greystone information, right? That's, yes, yes, that's Greystone's. If anybody watching this has any sort of comments, concerns, information, or ideas for anything, really. Any, or any even if they want to get involved and maybe get involved. help out. No, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah at future efforts at Greystone, right, their events and whatnot. Um, or, yeah, you know, help spread the word, right, if they want to just get involved, educated about it, anything like that. Um, you know, that was uh, Bill and Diane's email and right, right, phone yeah. number for Greystone. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. any, anything would help. So, like I said, this is going to go beyond me, right? There's only so much I can do in a specific semester. But I'm trying to get the word out there, gather as much information as I possibly can, and then I'll bring it all together in some sort of files or formats mm -hmm. to pass on mm -hmm. to the next person to pick up the mantle. Yeah, I, I know that uh, there are, there is, I know of at least one person 
uh, who was an intern in past years that has remained as, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of her name, uh, that is still involved with Greystone after um, probably at least five or years or so oh, wow. after having been an intern there. So, right. um, yeah, I, I think some people get really, when they've worked out there, they get really devoted. And mm -hmm. Bill and Diane have people come out uh, from the Job Corps. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have a little over 12 minutes. Right. That, yeah. Um, they have people come out from the Job Corps. And uh, before my husband retired, I remember uh, when he was uh, working at the Resource Center, um, he was bringing people from the Resource Center out there to do things. Um, you haven't actually started working there yet, but uh, maybe there's things you don't know about it yet. Uh, like they put up a, a teepee every, uh, every year usually. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah, oh. they, they do. So that might be something fun for you to look forward to mm -hmm. and um, I'm not sure if they have s use it well anyway I'm not sure if they do those sweat lodge things with it mm. or, or what I don't know but I, I know that uh, Diane um, is very interested in Native American um, practices so that's really so. interesting yeah it's uh it's been an interesting experience working with them because I haven't actually met them yet, right? <laughs> They've been in Florida, but which is what I started in January, so they haven't been here. So we've been trying to get as much done as we possibly can with those limitations, right? I've been working with them regularly over the phone. I've been working on my own, trying to get as much done as I can. But hopefully when they come back, I'm sure there'll be a lot, a lot more opportunities mm -hmm. for growth and development. Yeah, they're, they have a vegetable garden over there mm -hmm. every year. Uh, there's, uh, they have this little um, pool. Um, I wouldn't call it a pond because it's small, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, goldfish, uh, oh. that goldfish live in. And if you go, I think it's something about if you go over and tap on the rocks or something like that, uh, they'll come over. Uh, I guess they train them to do that by doing that when they're going to feed them. Mm. And uh, and they have chickens. Okay. They have chickens that live over there. So that's something you have to look forward to. Is Absolutely. Getting to hang out with chickens and they have bat houses, mm -hmm. and uh, do you know much about bats at all? No, not terribly much, no. Yeah. The main thing I know about them is I've always been scared to death of them yeah. ever since I was a little girl, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, but they had, um, they had a, uh, a few years back, they had a big um, thing that they put on where they had people doing programs with, um, like somebody would do talks on butterflies, uh, like the monarch butterflies. And they had some speakers this one time that we were listening to uh, that are like experts on bats. Mm -hmm. so, so there's a lot going on over there. Uh, do you have any experience with vegetable gardening? I started my own garden this past summer, I worked at a greenhouse. Oh, did you? I did. Oh, um, good. So then, you know, I got discounts on all the vegetables. Oh. So I was able to make my own garden and then plant my own stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, you're pretty much into organic gardening then, probably. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, next week we're going to be doing a program on the uh, dangers of toxic gardening products. Okay. So. So uh, that's a that's a big problem. The honeybees mm. have a lot are have a lot of problems, mm. you know, with the pesticides and the weed killers and all that. On top of the kinds of diseases that they can get. So. Right. So is that for like just vegetable gardens or like agriculture too, just in general? 
Um, do you do you have any idea? Are you talking about it next week? Or? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You know we. Right. Uh, well, you know people are personally endangering themselves mm -hmm. and the environment if they use them, but uh, you know there's uh, the farms that produce the food um, that everybody eats. Mm -hmm you know, that goes to the grocery stores and things like that, too. So it's it's basically we're going to um, let people know what kind of problems there can be. So Yeah, that ties in nicely with everything, you know, talking about today, protecting the environment, the species, keeping things stable, diverse, um, whereas, like, you know, the honeybees, if they're in danger, they drop the out. Whole, then we're in danger. Right. We're in serious danger if, right. if they become extinct. Yeah, um, I guess they're responsible for 80 percent for pollinating, like 80 percent of um, the uh, the flowers and and foods and things. You mm -hmm. know, so um, but. Uh, but anyways, um, so we've got like almost seven minutes left. Was Were there any other things that you... I don't think so. Really just to like, you know, thank you guys um, for yeah. giving me this opportunity. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Chris, oh. Chris, right, oh, for yeah, helping yeah. establish he's, all of this. He's, he's, um, really, he, he's really very good with all of the technical stuff around the studio and right. uh, he has a full-time job at the Chautauqua County Board of Elections and oh, okay. somebody over there, somebody who works over there told me that uh, he's their go-to guy when they have problems Tech with their problem. technical equipment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, I'm really uh, happy that all of, uh, that they can get students to come out from the college. Uh, oh, no, absolutely. To be, to be interns. Right. I want to say, uh, you know, thank the college too for helping me out. Um, right, they had a, I, they had a job expo a couple of weeks ago, and Greystone was there, right, uh, advertising their internship. So you know, they they are involved. Right? It's a little, it's not close, too close to the college, but they're still getting people involved um, regularly, as far as I can tell, to help them with their efforts environmentally. So that's always a good sign. It's a good sign. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, have you seen the? Uh, rock over there, uh, the one with the dinosaur footprint in it? I think in pictures. Oh, just in pictures? It's well, it's right, out, it's right outside the door uh, into the house there. Mm -hmm. uh, there it, the rock, I think, came from down south somewhere. Somebody mm -hmm. got it. Somebody got it. I, I can't remember if he said... Uh, a relative of theirs had gotten it for them, but mm -hmm. you know, it's it's just a big flat rock with a dinosaur footprint in it. Hmm. <coughs> That's interesting. Now, I'm excited to you know meet them, get to, get to know everything that they do on the property and everything like that. So I'm, it'll be a great educational experience for me to better my work in the area and do for the rest of the internship and uh, help me help who comes after me as well. Right. Right. Yeah, you can see Lake Erie from up at Greystone, too, yeah. So, yeah, you get a beautiful sunset up there. Mm, I bet. bet. Out where we are in the woods, um, would you say a little something about how you feel about the area that we live in? The day that I spoke with you on the phone, when you called to get yourself scheduled, you were talking about um, I think you said something about how we live in one of the best places in the country or something like that. What was that that you said? It might have just been going over the uniqueness right, yeah. of all, all of the environmental and geographical factors that I, you know, I didn't know about before. I've lived here my whole life, I didn't know about it. But I've learned about it over the course of the internship, so I think it's really neat. Um, just in general, you know, you get all four seasons. Um, it's a pretty nice, uh, the, you know, we're out in the country here, but if you need something, there's like a buffalo nearby. Mm -hmm. It's just, we have a lot to offer um, without being too 
extreme in one avenue or another. Right, like we, right. Like well, you know, so much of the area is like out in the country. Right. And yet you're never far away from um, a, a store right. or something. You know, it's like within a few miles. We live three miles outside the village of Mayville. Mm -hmm. You know, but we're just a few minutes away from right. being uptown, but even when you're uptown in Mayville, it's a small little village, so you're not going into a city. Right. I, I mean, it's just uh, the neighborhood that we live in is just sort of a perfect, uh, a perfect kind of um, neighborhood right. just because of the closeness to things and yet, and yet it looks like being out in the wilderness and yet it's not really far out. Right, you have, there's a great balance there, right? You have everything you need, but you still get to enjoy the beauty of nature, your independence and your privacy where, where you won't get in a big city. Um, so it's, it's a really good balance, just like, like the modern world and then the nature aspect of things. Everything's convenient, so you know, nothing's inconvenient. It's a nice place mm -hmm. to live. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of things to offer. And I want to say New York State, surprisingly, has like one of the larger portions of public land in like the country um, as a state percentage-wise. Percentage uh, now, do you mean um, public land like parks and things? Like parks and stuff like that, right. So we, you know, like you said, it's almost like we're in the country so often, but it's never inconvenient. And there's plenty of like state parks and trails and that, this and that. To, to experience in New York State. When you know you say New York, people think New York City and mm -hmm. that's it. But there's a lot more to it than that. Oh and, yeah. And yeah. I'd rather live in this part of the state, right? Oh, than oh definitely, in New York City, definitely, right? yeah. You know, it's funny, um, there have been times when I have met uh, people from out of New York State, like Ohio and mm -hmm. like that, and uh, have people say to me, you don't sound like you're from New York. Mm -hmm. They're thinking about that accent they, that they have in the eastern part of the state, right. you know, which we don't have out no. here in western New York. So, um, so it's 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 pretty funny when you hear somebody say that. Yeah. So, but uh, it's funny, like how different the accents can be. But, um, well, anyway, I just wanted to say uh, I, I do appreciate that you came on today and made this PowerPoint presentation, and I found it very interesting. And um, I'm hoping we're encouraging people to take better care of, of the environment. Uh, absolutely. You know, thank you again. Uh, thank Chris. Thank the college. Thank Greystone. For giving me this opportunity, you know, I hope I hope somebody found it. You know, you found it, you enjoyed it, so there we go. There's a win. Oh yeah, well they can they can uh, they can watch it on the internet too, actually. Right. So, um, so anyways, thank you, and uh, I'll see the rest of you in the viewing audience on the next episode. Mm -hmm.